Once again to everyone, Merry Christmas and thank you for tuning in to the broadcast today. We've been preaching a wonderful sermon inside of the most wonderful time of the year. This is part three. You've heard part one, you've heard part two, now you're going to hear part three. And I'm telling you, it's such a blessing of the Lord and you're going to be blessed. We're going to deal with the role of the three wise men in the Christmas story. You know, I was raised on the streets of New Orleans. We call them three wise guys, you know, the three wise men. You are going to learn something in this because this, it, it's an amazing, amazing story and something you've never heard before in a different way of looking at the Christmas story. Call a friend, tell them to turn that television on. They're going to be blessed, ladies and gentlemen. Get a pencil and paper, take some notes. You're going to learn some wonderful things today. Watch this part three now. Now I want to deal with three wise guys. Or the, the, the three wise men. If you're Italian, wise guys. You know, you do what you got to do. Those kind of things. And I want to deal with that. How many people brought your Bibles? Let me see. At your hand. Let me see your iPad, your phone, your Bible, whatever you're using for. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 2. We're going to deal with these three guys. And they, their names were Malchus, or Makar was his name, Casper, and Balthazar. Those three guys. Uh, Ma 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 it's hard for me to say his name. Makar was from India. Caspar was from Persia. And Balthazar was from Arabia. These three men. They called them kings. They were wise men. They were actually the scientists of that day. They were astrologers. They were looking in space, in the stars. They knew nothing about God in terms of what we know about it. But something came up. God always shows signs even to the unbeliever. And they begin to wonder what was this about? Were there any prophecies concerning this star? Anybody said something? And that began to happen. So I want to read Matthew chapter 2 out of the old King James Version, verse 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Notice it, they didn't know. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen this star in the east and are come to worship him. Then Herod the king had heard these things. He was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Notice he was troubled. Why? Satan's always troubled when Jesus shows up. And a lot of people that call themselves Christians are troubled when God shows up. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Listen to me. Let's keep reading here. And when he had gathered, verse 4, and when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded them where Christ should be born. Now notice, he wanted to know even himself, the king of the Jews didn't know where Christ would be born. And that said, how many people go to church today don't know anything about what God's doing? Or the signs of the time or anything of that nature. And yet, they call themselves Christians. Keep reading with me. They said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus is written by the prophets, and thou Bethlehem in the, in the land of Judah are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring the word again and I may come and worship him also. When they heard, when they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Notice the light always finds the source of the light. Notice that. The star found the source of the star. Verse 10, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented to him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. So I'm, I'm, I'm telling this series, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Because most people just think uh, Christmas time is a time for gifts, and it is a time for gifts. But notice something, even people are nicer at Christmas time in the malls than they are when it's over with. Don't get around people when they're returning stuff. They get pretty rough. You understand what I'm saying? Especially after Christmas. Or if somebody, you know, uh, buys you a gift and you find out that they put it in the attic. Oh, Lord Jesus. Things like that happen. But no my around Christmas, now up to this time, it's a season of joy. And what people don't realize it because you see the unconscious obedience of the unbeliever, they're out there uh, actually buying gifts and things for people don't realize that they're celebrating the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to deal with this here on is the most wonderful time of the year. And they call these three wise men the Magi. 
So I want to deal with this first. So write this down, number one. Science is the handmaid of religion. Science is the handmaid of religion if it is pursued in a humble and teachable spirit. In other words, if you're a scientist, you shouldn't become an atheist. You understand what I'm saying? Because God calls scientists to study different things. So science is the handmaid of religion if it is pursued in a humble and teachable spirit. And these three wise men or these three scientists or these three magi or astrologers, they had a teachable spirit. Where is he who is the king of the Jews? Because we've seen his star. Notice it had nothing to do with their faith. It had to do with what they saw. They saw a star. Why is that star there? They wanted to know that. There must be something else other than the movement of the universe. Think about that. But so they were teachable, completely teachable. And when you understand that, and I tell all the scientists today, my God, look into the stars, find out everything going out there. But remember that God is a creator and you don't have to see him to believe that he is. I was saying this, we were eating lunch with uh, uh, Kevin and Kathy Zeta. Uh, faith has nothing natural in it. There's no natural this to anything in faith. You're not going to feel it. You're not, it has nothing to do with that. In fact, you don't even see it. The evidence of it's not seen because faith is a spiritual concept. And the reason why scientists have problems, they, they believe in by faith because they're looking for something natural in faith and there's nothing natural in faith at all. It is what actually what you're sitting on was created by faith, something you couldn't see. Amen. Think about that for a minute. So science is the handmaid of religion if it is pursued in a humble and teachable spirit. Write this down. Divine revelation does not stop with human study. Just because you're studying things and knowing things, whether it's ministry or whether it's science, it doesn't stop. Divine revelation does not stop with human study. See, new lights do not extinguish old truths. Just because you find out something doesn't mean you throw away the old truth. Now, you know, we're not under the law by no means. Don't misunderstand, but we're under grace. We're under a new covenant, but we don't throw the law away. Because 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 17 says, all scripture is the Ten Commandments scripture. It's Leviticus scripture, even though you don't uh, sacrifice animals, but it's scripture. The Bible said it's profitable to understand that because you see, you got a new light on something greater called the covenant of grace, but it doesn't extinguish the old truths. And a lot of people want to extinguish the old truth. You can't extinguish history. You may not like it, but history is there. Prophecy is history wrote in advance. Think about that for a minute. So divine revelation does not stop with human study. New lights do not extinguish old truths. Now watch this. You got to understand something about the Magi. They were coming to see Jesus Christ. Yeah, but they were not the first. They were the Gentiles. Who was the first people to ever see Jesus? I, I'll, I'll jump a little bit and get over to the Jesus part on the Sunday before Christmas here. Because next Sunday I'm dealing with Mary. Oh, Lord, you Catholics, y'all come. <laughs> You're going to like what I say about Mary. I want to tell you something. It's good. Some of you probably are going to freak out what I say about Mary. And I, I, we're dealing with these different characters that Jesus, that God put in order for his birth. You got to understand, so what was that? I'll just give a little, I'll jump ahead. At the manger was Jew and Gentile. There was no prejudice whatsoever at all at the manger of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why Bethlehem? The word Bethlehem means house of bread. House of bread. And Jesus was the living bread. So they had come to eat. Do you come to eat today? Do you come to receive what God has for you today? Bethlehem means house of bread. So they came to see the living bread. Now I'm getting ahead of myself here. That's in a couple of weeks to give you an idea of what I'm talking about at that manger. No prejudice whatsoever. So if it wasn't no prejudice there, why are there prejudice today? It should not be. Because there was different colors of people in those three. There was a black man. You understand? There was an Indian man. There was brown, white, and black. It doesn't make no difference. You can be red, yellow, green, purple. Who cares? It's just pigmentation of skin. That's all that is. So I want you to see this. Divine revelation does not stop with human study. New lights do not extinguish old truths. Now, what were they looking for? The Magi was looking for the star. The Magi came by a leading of a star. Write that down. The Magi came by the leading of a star. Jesus calls us by his word, by his works, and by his spirit. 
So there's something God will send you on the roads. If you read the signs on the road to, to heaven, you'll see these signs, these truths. He calls us not by a star, but by his word. My God, in, in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was with God. He calls us by his works. Go do the work that I do and do it greater. He calls us by his spirit. He said, how be it the spirit of truth has come? Why? Which is the Holy Spirit. So they were led by the star. You led by the word, by the works, and by the spirit. I'm preaching better than you shouting right now. So in actuality, you magi. Because you're searching and understanding some things. Now let me get a little ahead of myself. Why were the Jews poor? Why were the first people to see Jesus were the shepherds? Why were they poor? Why were the magi rich? Huh? Explain that for a minute. How could that be? When God said that the blessing of Abraham would come upon them, all families of the earth would be blessed. And I've been in Jerusalem, I've been on those hills, and I have met some shepherds, my God, and all of them are poor. Why? Did they believe the blessing of Abraham was upon them? Evidently, they didn't. Notice that. Why was the Gentile? Who gave first, the Gentile or the Jew? The Gentile. The Magi came bringing gifts. But they never thought of it as gifts. They thought of it as worship that I may worship this king of kings, this rose of Sharon, this lily of the valley, this bright morning star. The Jews, the shepherds should have brought way more than the Magi because they had the blessing of Abraham on them. Why do we have poverty today? And I'll tell you why, because we've learned to finance poverty instead of eradicating poverty. We want the shepherds poor. We want people poor. We think that's a wonderful thing when it's, it's the worst thing in the world. Children are dying right now because of poverty when it should have been eradicated. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Oh, Lord, I'm starting to preach this thing. So the Magi came, watch this, by a leading of a star. They were gone just by what they could see. They had no faith. They were just gone by what they saw. You, are, you come by the word, by the works, and by his spirit. That's how Jesus guides us. That's why faith has nothing natural in it whatsoever at all. Now, faith is the substance of things what? Hope for the evidence of things not seen. Dealing with that. See, you're walking by faith and not by sight. No naturalness whatsoever at all. See, but when you understand and operate in, quote, the unnatural, it becomes supernatural. Then the supernatural brings the natural to your being. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Magi. Think about that. I mean, how many people are not searching for God today? And yet people that knew nothing of God were searching for him. Mm, mm, mm. Think about that. And, and the Herod the king didn't even know where he was being born. King of the Jews, and you don't know whether where the Messiah would be born. Think about that. Isn't that sad? But that sounds very pertinent for today. A lot of them people in church this morning don't know what. In fact, I was watching a movie the other day, and it was a Catholic mass, and they were speaking in English, and the lady said, you know, I prefer, the ca I prefer when they speak in Latin because I can't understand anything they said. It's better when we don't understand it. That was in the movie. What's the name of that movie? While You Were Sleeping. While you were sleeping. That's what the lady said in church. I prefer it in Latin because we can't understand them. There are a lot of churches speaking Latin today. And you know, Latin's a dead language. Now, I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about there are a lot of people preaching today. They may be preaching English, but it's all Latin because nobody understanding. Because they're not moved by the word. They're not moved by the works. They're not moved by the spirit. My Lord Jesus. Maybe they need some magi in their church. At least they got a light. Oh, you hearing what I'm saying here? Ooh, Lord. Write this down. We must have a simple faith, undoubting obedience, and a deep loving reverence. That's what that Magi had, these wise men. Notice these different characters of people. They had an undoubting, they had a simple faith. They just got on some camels and started going. 1,500 miles. My Lord Jesus. Undoubting obedience. Why is that? They just said, well, the prophecy must be true. And a deep loving reverence. Why? They immediately prepared to meet a king with the gifts they had. Are you pre prepared to meet Jesus today with your gift? What is your gift? It can be physical, spiritual, and financial, but your greatest gift is your heart. I never forget my granddaughter. She was such a blessing. Somebody was preaching. She said, you got to give Jesus your heart. She was only about eight years old. And she said, Mama, I need my heart. I can't give Jesus my heart. I need my heart. I got to live. I need my heart. She said, I ain't talking about it physically, but we're talking about it spiritually. Give your heart, man, or the spirit man, see. Because a church is a place where you do give spiritually, physically, and financially, and you should never complain about that. 
Because it's an act of worship. All they did was to come and worship him. And in the midst of that worship came gifts. So let me say it again. We must have a simple faith. They had a simple faith. An undoubting, I love it, an undoubting obedience. Yet people that know the truth, that have the nine gifts, the nine fruits, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, does not have a simple faith. Do, they have a doubting faith instead of an undoubting faith. And they don't have much reverence at all. And they had a deep living reverence. Notice they had to go to the, to the church to find out where he was. And, and you know what's amazing to me? How come nobody followed them? The, this Jesus was born for Jews, not for the Gentiles. Nobody found you. It had been me. I'd have got me a donkey or a horse and said, I'm going where you guys are going. You understand what I'm saying? Hmm. But see, that's how the church is. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, it's called obligation. We go to church on obligation. We feel good about it. You know, midnight mass, Christmas Eve. Get drunk as a skunk and then go down there. Oh. <laughs> Did you go to church? Yeah, man. What did they say? I don't know, man. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Notice these people. Yet, the people that the church world would be criticizing, the Gentile, they had more faith, more reverence, and more obedience than any of the people that were in the, what we call the Jewish church at that day. And I'm not being against Jews. I'm just saying, I'm showing you, it's happening the same way today. In fact, the Gentiles picked up on that too. Then they shouldn't. They should have stayed with the Magi. Do you see what I'm saying? They should have stayed with the three wise men. That's why they were called wise men. Some translation calls them kings. So let me say this again. We must have a simple faith, undoubting obedience, and a deep loving reverence. Let me go over this again. Science is the handmaid of religion if it is pursued in a humble and teachable spirit. Divine revelation does not stop with human study. I could preach an hour on each one of these things. New lights do not extinguish old truths. Just because I learned something great in the scripture doesn't mean I extinguish what I already know. Hmm. The Magi came by the leading of a star, by the leading of light. Jesus calls us by his word, by his works, and by his spirit. Then I tell you, we must have a simple faith, undoubting obedience, and a deep loving reverence. So these three men, Malchar, Casper, and Balthasar, didn't know scripture. You mean to tell me they got on a camel and didn't know scripture? Yeah, went 1,500 miles in that desert, enough to get killed out there, bandits everywhere. They didn't know scripture. My God. Yet what was moving them? Malchar, Casper, and Balthasar didn't know scripture, but when they heard, believed. When faith cometh by hearing, when they heard that a king of the Jews was born in Bethlehem of Judea, the house of bread, who would be living bread. Ooh, Jesus. Faith arise. If faith can arise in a heathen, how come faith cannot arise in a Christian? If a Gentile can believe to be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out, how come you can't believe being blessed in the city, going in, going out? You notice that those three men were not criticizing wealth of any kind, and yet people criticize at all times that know Christ. When the Bible said the blessing of Abraham should be upon you as well. Well, Jesus was poor. When was he poor? Tell me when was he poor. Who needs a boat when you can walk on the water? If you want to know where he lived, it tells you. He said, they said where your house? He said, come, I'll show you. He had his own personal boat. Did you know that? He had his own personal boat. So he could get away and go somewhere, something, make everybody mad as a hornet. He was debt free. What do you think about that, huh? Oh, he was so poor. Yeah, he really was. He had 12 full-time people on staff. Some were married. He had 70 part-time. Bless God that he sent out. And when you go fishing with him, you get a boatload full. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they gambled for his clothes. Lord, you don't gamble for rags. You gamble to get something better than what you got. If you won the lottery, would you say, oh, no, it's too much and tear it up the ticket? No. And you guys that say, oh, that's a sin, you'd sure take that money, wouldn't you? Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. If you think that a lot of the sin, somebody come up to pay off your church, don't take that money! <laughs> no, you're going to go, uh, 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 wealth of the sin they laid out for the just. All of, sudden, all of a sudden, you get real scriptural on that one, don't you? My God. The, the Magi was teaching, quote, the Jews how to live. Blessed in the city. They had the blessing of Abraham. The shepherds didn't. And yet that prophecy was not spoken to them. But they had enough sense to believe the scripture when they heard it. 
Do you have enough sense to believe it when you hear it? Ooh, Jesus. You will not stay in darkness when you seek him in faith. You will not stay in darkness when you seek him in faith. I love that point. You will not stay in darkness when you seek Jesus in faith. Tell you something about the Magi. They came to Jesus by the leading of a star. Who is leading us? Jesus is leading us too. Isn't that a blessing of God? See, the word of God will lead you all the time. The Bible says, how be it when the spirit of truth has come, he would guide you in all truth, not some truth or a truth, but all truth. Well, we're going to believe the all of the Bible. I tell you what, you believe the all of the Bible, I don't care how bad the world gets, you're going to be in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. I love how the three wise men recognize God's sacrifice of Jesus. You know, they didn't have the word, but when they heard, Faith come by hearing. They believed and prepared. Prepared what? How to meet a king. How to, how to say, oh my, the king of kings, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Are you prepared to meet Jesus today? That's a good question. I'd like to introduce you to the greatest king and best friend you will ever have. Let's do it now. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to save people that are watching today that don't know you. They may know about you, Lord, but they don't know you. Lord, I ask you to forgive them of all their sin today. Wash them clean through the word and the precious blood of Jesus. We accept them right now, Lord, because of a simple prayer of repentance and faith into the family in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? See, religion complicates things, you know. Religion's a God in the weeds. It's a theological wilderness. But when you take this Bible and you just read it verbatim, and, and, and read it with your heart through a renewed mind and a crucified body. It's amazing what people think is complicated becomes so simple. Welcome to the family. You prayed that prayer. Isn't that a blessing of God? Now, I may not know you here, but when we get to heaven, I'll get to meet you. Praise the Lord. And maybe I'll get to meet you here too. It would be wonderful. It's exciting to get born again at this time of the year, celebrating in Jesus' birthday. Woo! Now, stay right there. I'll be back in just a moment to speak another word to you. I want to show you some things that are going on at Jesse the Plants Ministries. I'll be right back. Watch this. Jesus! Man, we've been to Australia. We've been to Europe. Just preaching the gospel everywhere. Just, just going all over, preaching the gospel. such a degree that the world will see who he really is. Come on, it's time. It's time. to experience the Christmas story like never before? In his book, The Most Wonderful Time of the Year, Jesse Duplantis delivers an insightful, fresh look at the manger and beyond. You'll be inspired to have a higher life of faith as he explores the mysterious ways God moves. Get ready to elevate your character with the characters of Christmas. The Most Wonderful Time of the Year, Uncommon Lessons from the Christmas Story. Order your copy at JDM.org today. I really love our December product offers. My book, The Most Wonderful Time of the Year. It is a blessing. The messages you've been watching are based on this wonderful book that God gave me for you. Get a copy for yourself and someone you love. What a better, it would make a great Christmas gift. To, I mean that sincerely because you got to learn about Jesus. How do you get it? You go to jdm.org for all the ordering information and you'll be blessed. 
Partners, thank you for all you've done, doing, and going to do. You've been so kind to this ministry, so faithful to it. You know, we, you know what we do. We reach people. We change lives one soul at a time. We've asked the Lord for every dollar given to our ministry. You've heard me say it many times. Give me a soul into the kingdom. And, buddy, we are doing that. And I mean that sincerely. And what a great time to give God an extra special gift when we celebrate Jesus' birthday. Me and Kathy do that all the time. Not only do we do our regular giving like we do every month, but, oh, come Christmas, we say, Lord, we want to give you a special gift. And it's just such a blessing to be able to do that. Partners, thank you for all you've done. I mean that sincerely. Without you, we could not do this. 47 years going on 48, and we've never had a financial deficit. It's amazing because you obeyed God, I obeyed God. And guess what? God does what he does best. He shows up and he shows out. Isn't that a blessing? I hope you enjoyed today and you learned some things about the, the Magi, these wise men. My Lord, think about that. These people were not in the covenant of God. Yet they heard the word. They heard about this, this, this baby. They heard somebody was born. Who, where is he who was born king of the Jews? Think about that for a minute. And God blessed them beyond their wildest dream. Yet they had the blessing all over them. The shepherds who had the blessing of Abraham didn't have it. Why? Religiously brainwashed. Instead of being biblically taught with the word of the living God. Isn't that wonderful? I want to say once again, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you today. And let me tell you, Merry Christmas is not about just receiving gifts, even though they're nice. It's celebrating who Jesus is, who became a man that we might become the righteousness of God. So don't miss next week. You are going to be blessed. We'll be talking about Mary more than just the virgin birth next week. See you soon. Bye-bye. Get fired up with who you really are and take the time to get in His presence and be filled with His glory. God has opened up the door, girls, and we need to walk through it. Kathy Duplantis' Glorious, a conference for women. Register online at jdm.org. For our December partner offer, we have a great message. Listen to this. The idea of God needs to be altered. See, the Bible said that the Word was made flesh. We've been taught our flesh is bad. Well, if it's so bad, why was God made flesh? This message is going to show you a whole different view of God. And that's going to give you a different view of yourself. Go to jdm.org to order your copy today. Life is better when you never learn to doubt. In his new book, Jesse will show you how to shut doubt down. You can have more joy, more success, and full peace. I Never Learned to Doubt, now available at JDM.org. Mary has a divine secret. She's pregnant. Now, who would believe her if she said, I was, I was pregnated by God Almighty? You would say, well, what's his name? Who is it? You see what I'm saying? Because it's unbelievable and it's impossible, but it's doable. 